God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Hallelujah. So this morning we'll share together from the book of John chapter 11. John chapter 11. And I want to be talking about the non-believing believers. Non-believing believers. Glory to God. So there are believers who believe and there are believers who are non-believers. <laughs> and so we want to look at it in the context of the story of Lazarus and, and his sisters. The story of Lazarus and his sisters. And Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. It's such a good thing to be a friend of the Lord. It's a good thing to be a friend of the Lord. And Jesus looked at his disciples after he had been with them, invested in them, changed them, transformed them. He said, I no longer call you slave, but friends. You are my friends. Glory to God. Not only did he call them his friends, he said they were his brothers. They were his brothers. He, those who do the will of the Lord, they are my brothers and my sisters. He, 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 he drew them into his space. He opened up himself to them that they can explore him. Glory to God. It's such, it's such a beauty to be, in, to be able to come into God's son's presence and feel his awesome power. You cannot but stand in awe when you are in the presence of Jesus and you feel him around you, the energy that comes out of his presence and his glory. And so Jesus calls us friends. We can come into his space and explore him. Glory to God. And so Lazarus was one of those friends of Jesus. And, and Jesus went all over the place preaching the word of God. But he had no home, no place of his own, a place he called his. But he had folks, whenever he was in town, Jesus will lodge him there. And they'll take care of him. And not just him and his disciples. <laughs> Twelve men. Imagine if I come to your house with 12 men. And some of you are going to say, well, pastor, I don't know if I can take care of you all. But that, that's, how much, that's how much love that Jesus had with those who cherish him and appreciate him. See, what, what I don't appreciate, I lose. When I don't, when I don't appreciate something, I lose it. Because it does not matter to me. But these folks, they love and appreciate Jesus and his disciples. And Lazarus' home was always open to Christ and his disciples each time they came by Bethany. And so that friendship that they have developed over time. See, you kid, God is faithful. God is good. God answer all prayer. But I believe that God is better served. When I have served him for some time before I bring my request to him. So I'm not just, I'm, I, God is not just an object to me that I approach every time I have problems. Every time I need something. What about when I don't need nothing? What about if I just come to God's presence and just lay myself and say, God, I came here to worship you and to bless you. Not to ask of you anything, but just to bless you. Now think about it. If you have somebody who always calls you, maybe even if it's your son, your daughter, each time you get that phone call, is dad, I need something. Each time. Or a friend of yours, each time we come around, I need help. Never checks on you. Never just call you out of blues and say, well, I just called to say I love you. I just called to say hello. I just called to check on how you are doing. I just called to see if I can be of help to you today. Let me know if you need anything. Now think about it. When that person calls later on and say, I need something, think about how you will feel. 
to help that individual uh, compared to somebody who every time you see that phone call is asking for help every time is and, and that's how sometimes we treat god each time we, we we talk to god it's only when we need him to help us no conversation no time of fellowship no time to say god i just want to bless your name i just want to worship you i just want to praise you i just want to take this time to give you glory and honor and praise i'm fasting i'm fasting because i need some spiritual enrichment i need i need to be closer to you that's why i'm fast i'm not fasting because i need a car i need a new new house i need a new job you know therefore all oh, whenever they fast it's only when they need something from god that's it not not fasting to be closer to god no 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 only when they, because we've been taught that way the god is like an atm machine all we need to do is just go in there to draw out even the atm machine you gotta have something in there you gotta invest something in there you gotta put something in there to get something out and so lazarus shows us an example here a friend of christ when he needed nothing and every time jesus came he brought all of his men and some of the folk came with him and joined in the party and lazarus took care of them and now lazarus is sick lazarus is sick and dying <laughs> glory to god and, and so and so something began to happen as lazarus took ill and again it, it shows to us a lesson here that just the fact that we're christian doesn't mean that we we are insulated from the troubles of this world yeah and and, and that's that's an un, a misunderstanding of most christians that when they're going through tough times not knowing that tough times don't last and they question god and query god and folk who are mad at god because they think that this life is uh, smooth sail there'll never be bumps on the road it's gonna be smooth sail. and so when when it's bumpy and you see folk who say god where are you you've left me i don't want to serve you no more and some stay out and there are others who backslid it just left say well i don't want to do this because he did not help me when i needed him <laughs> glory to god but our understanding should be the God, regardless of the circumstance and situation that I find myself, that he knows better than I. And he's working through that situation to see that the best comes out of it. I should trust God enough to know that. So Lazarus is a friend of Jesus. And then now he is sick. And his sickness was not just a headache that you take some Tylenol, you'll be all right. It was a very serious sickness. And Jesus confirmed it. It was sickness unto death. So an assignment has already been placed on this man. A friend of Christ. You know how we question folks. Say, well, he go to church every day and look at him. He's going through all kind of issues in his life lack of understanding that's why fellow christians fellow christians will criticize other christians who are going through some tough situations in their life and sometimes we will say that they, they they must be committing sins that's why that's why god is is punishing them god doesn't punish people with hardship his children with hardship he, he doesn't have to do that except when we walk away from him and he wants to get our attention because he's been trying to talk to us all the while and we're not listening and he will allow certain wild wind to come in our lives so we can run back to him yeah he'll, he'll do that that's what the children of israel a lot of time he had to put them in line by letting them go through certain things in life but it is not punishment it is to build me and make me better not bitter but you have folks who are bitter in their mind. And there are folks who show up in church and they are bitter in their spirit. Against who? Against God. Against God. How can I fight against God? <laughs> Glory to God. How can I? How white should I? 
And so Lazarus now is sick unto death. And he is going to die. And he is a friend of God. He's going to die. Friend of God is going to die. But Jesus, he's going to do something about it. And that, that's the thing about God. It doesn't matter how worse the situation is. Ultimately, he's going to do something for me. My life can be in a mess right now. But that's not the end of it. Because at the end of the day, Jehovah is going to show himself mighty. And the glory will be his. Lazarus will die. And Lazarus is a friend of Jesus. But he, he, he had some unbelieving believers in his life. And we're going to find out right now in the word of God. John's Gospel chapter 11. John's Gospel chapter 11. And let's read from verse 17. I'm going to be reading the Amplified Version for proper understanding. I put it in context, go up a little bit. Let's start from verse 11. And he said these things and then announced, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Christ was not in Britain when all of these things were happening. But because he is God-man, he knew what was going on in Lazarus' life. He knew exactly what was happening. And tell me, God doesn't, Jesus doesn't know what's going on in your life. Yes, he does know. He knows what I am going through in my life. He knows nothing, nothing, nothing that I experience is outside of God's knowledge. No. Jesus is, is doing his thing, running his crusade. And then he stopped and said to all of his disciples that were with him, Lazarus is sleeping. And they were shocked. Why would you, what, what, what would you tell us Lazarus? If he's sleeping, then it's good. It's good. Let him take some rest. So he'll feel better. And then Jesus looked at them. He said, no, 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 no. He said, no, 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 guys. No, no, no. He said, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. Now, verse 12. And, and his disciples said, Master, if he's going, if he's gone to sleep, he'll get a good rest and wake up feeling fine. Then Jesus was talking about his dead. Why his disciples thought he was talking about him taking a nap. Verse 14. Then Jesus became explicit. Lazarus died. That's what he said to them. Lazarus died. I am glad. Look at what the Lord said. He said, and I am glad for your sake that I wasn't there. You are about to be given new grounds for believing. Now, let's go. You, you and I can only believe God to the extent that we experience him. That's it. You can only, I can only believe God to the extent that I experience him. Now, Jesus said, Lazarus is dead. He said, but I'm happy for you, my disciples. Because you're about to see another side of God that will strengthen your belief. You're about to see another side of God that will strengthen your belief. I believe, I believe in God is, is, is subject to how much of God we have experienced. If God has ever delivered you from a near-death experience, somebody has come to you and tell you God cannot deliver you, say, no, 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 no. I have had this experience with him. I know he can do it. That person may say God cannot because he has never experienced God in that dimension. Because you have. You say, no, 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 God can't. He will. I know he did it before. I know he's going to do it again. I knew how he delivered me from the hands of all of my enemy. I knew how he delivered me when I had nothing. I, got, I knew what God has done in my life. The reason our faith differ, the level of our faith differ, is the level of our experience of God. That's it. If you have not experienced God enough, you cannot believe him enough. You can read about it in the Bible. 
We all read about it. It's a different thing to read about it than to experience it. And how do you tell Meshach and Abednego that God cannot deliver a man from out of the fire? How do you convince them? They were there. They've been there. They saw it. They did it. They, God, they knew how God delivered. How do you tell Daniel that God cannot shut them out of the lion? How do, you can tell me that God cannot shut them out of the lion. Sure, because I've never been in the lion's den and God delivered me from But But Daniel, if you place me and Daniel and ask us that question, Daniel has got a better answer because he was there in the lion's den and God delivered him. Now, now, just listen. Listen to me. Yeah, you're a Christian. You're born again, fire baptized, okay? And then you are brought with Daniel to the lion's den. And they say, Pastor Chris, <laughs> go in the lion's den. <laughs> now, think about it. Would you <laughs> walk right in the lion's den? Maybe you will. Or maybe some of us would. But you know that it will be easier and faster for Daniel to walk right in there. Because he has experienced God in, the, the, in that dimension of his life. And he knows that God will deliver him from it. It will be different. He will have a different mindset than somebody who has never been in the lion's den. Your, your experience with God determines how much of, of belief you have in him. If you have not, if all we've experienced about God is coming to church, lift up holy hands and all of that, that's good. That is good. That is good. But we need to experience him in a different level. And that is what strengthens our faith. And now, Lazarus, Jesus said, is dead. He said, I'm happy for you because you are about to see God in a different way. Verse 16, and then Thomas, Thomas, one of, the, one, one of those who call the twin, said unto his companion, come on, let's go, that we may die with him. And verse, Thomas didn't quite understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus was not saying, let's go die with him. Verse 17, when Jesus finally got there, he found Lazarus already four days dead. Jesus finally made it to Bethany. It was already four days after Lazarus was dead. Bethany was near Jerusalem, only a couple of miles away. And many of the Jews were visiting Martha and Mary, sympathizing with them over their brother. A lot of people came in the house, sympathizing with these two sisters whose brothers have just died. Whose brother had just died. Martha now heard that Jesus was coming. Glory to God. She and her sister were in the house morning and a lot of people with them and they heard that Jesus was coming and now Mary got out of the morning party and went out to meet Jesus and that tells us a lesson here that it is my responsibility when I'm going through those hardship hard time to get myself up out of my despair to go find God. To go find him. She could have, both of them, we'll find out his, his, the sister did the same thing. Both of them could have been sitting there crying with all of the mourners who were crying with them and mad. They could have been mad and said, well, Jesus called us his friend. My brother was his good friend. We, we, we sent to him five days ago. Over five days ago. That his friend was. What kind of Jesus is this? His friend was sick. He didn't even show up until he died. Huh? What kind of Jesus is this? They could have had that attitude. But they refused to. 
because that was not going to help them. And, and think about how many of us do that. Just like, yeah, this crap. Say, home. What kind of pastor is that? What kind of church is that? What kind of Christians they, they call themselves? What kind of God we serve? Huh? They say he's a good God, but I don't see his goodness in my life. You know, we, 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 that's not going to solve my problem. I need to confront my situation. I need to get up from my despair. I, I need to get out my discouragement. Can't bring God into despair because he does not speak that language. Can, he, he cannot meet me in my depression because that's not the place that God dwells in. He doesn't flourish in places like that. No, he, he'll be there and say, until, I'll wait, until you get out of your depression, I'm going to be here waiting for you. Because I don't speak that language. I speak the language of faith. I speak the language of somebody who's willing to say, no, I don't belong in despair and depression. I'm willing to break the cycle and get out of there and go find my God. Go into my secret place, into my closet. I want to go find my God. And she got up. She ran to meet Jesus. As, as she heard that Jesus was coming. And now this is what she said. Verse 21. He said, Matthew said, Master, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, he will give it to you. In verse 23, Jesus said, your brother will be raised up again. And now look at what Matthew replied. In Matthew replied, I know that he will rise up again on, in the resurrection at the end of time. <laughs> now, look at what Jesus said. You don't have to wait for the end. <laughs> you don't have to wait for the end. I am right now resurrection in life. One who believes in me, even though he's he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives, believing in me, does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Yes, Master. All along, I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who have come into this world. And after saying this, she went to her sister Mary and whispered into her, the teacher is here, is asking of you. The moment she heard that, she jumped up and ran to him. Jesus had not yet entered the town, but was still at the place where Matthew had met him. When her sympathizer Jewish friend saw Mary run up, they followed her thinking, she was on her way to the tomb to weep there. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at his feet saying, Master, same thing. Only, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her sobbing and the Jews were with her sobbing, deep anger went up within him. He said, where did you put him? Master, come and see, they said. Now Jesus wept. The Jews said, look how deeply he loved him. And Horda said, well, if he loved him so much, why didn't he do something to keep him from dying? After all, he opened the eye of the blind man. And the Bible said, then Jesus, and uh, again, went up within him. Arrived on the tomb, it was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone laid against it. Jesus said, remove the stone. The sister of the dead man master said, Master, by this time there is stench. He's been dead for days. Jesus looked at her. Didn't I tell you if you believe you would see the glory of God? And they took away the stone and Jesus 
bro Lazarus back to life. But you look at this sister. You remember what he, she said to Jesus. She said, whatever you ask the Lord, uh, whatever you ask the Lord, I said, I believe that whatever you ask God, God is going to answer you. That's what Martha said to Jesus. But now Jesus said, when she got to the tomb and said, we're going to raise Jesus, raise Lazarus from the... They said, no, 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 you can't do that. He, he's been four days died. He's dead four days. They're bestinged now. How, how does that connect? If I say, Jesus, everything you say, you ask God, God's going to do it. And Jesus is coming to ask something from God. And you say, no, Jesus, don't do it. Because it's four days. What does it matter if it's ten days? It only showed that they didn't believe that Jesus could raise the dead. But they believed he could open the blind my eye. The, the, the eye of the blind. They believed that. They, because they saw that. They never, they've never seen Jesus raise the dead. That was for the dead. So their belief was only contingent or tied to everything that they had seen. If, if Lazarus was blind, they would be okay. Because they knew that Jesus had healed the blind man. That Jesus was going to heal Lazarus. But now because it's dead for they, they said, no, it's not going to happen. No, 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 no. We don't believe that Jesus can do that. So there were believers, but there were also non-believing believers. Let's just think about it. And that's the same as our reason. That most of us have become non-believing believers. Because we, we, have, we have cornered God to a place in our mind where we last met him. The, the last miracle that he did. That is, that is where we've cornered God in our mind. He put food on my table. Yes, I know he can put food on my table. But I don't believe that he can create a miracle of food. And bring manna out of heaven. Because I've never seen him in that light. So the sisters believe that he is Jesus. He is a friend of Lazarus. But Lazarus has been dead for days. If he, if, if he really loved him, according to what they say, if, if Jesus truly loved him, he would have come before he died. That's what I say. They believe he could, Jesus could have healed him when he was sick. So they believe Jesus healed the sick. Yeah, he can heal the sick. Yeah, because they've seen him heal the sick before. They said it. Had you been here, our brother would not have died. That's what they say. If you had been here four days ago, he would not have died. But because you came four days later, he's dead. There's nothing you can do about it. But Jesus surprised them. <laughs> and, and when he told them, remove the slab. They, I don't believe that they believed that Lazarus was coming out of the dead. Because of their statements. Remove the slab. So now he's thinking now. They have a stench out of this. Why do we need to remove the slab? They have a stench coming out of this. But Jesus said remove it. And Jesus prayed to the father. In the presence of the more. And Lazarus came out. Of the grave. And he was alive again. And now from that moment on, something else happened in the life of the disciples, Martha and Mary. Now they believe that Jesus can raise the dead. And I like what Jesus said to, to her. When, she, when, when, Jesus, when Jesus said, Do you, you know, I told you that I am the resurrection and the life. That whoever believes me will not die. But on the resurrection day, and, 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 he said, and, and they said, yes, we believe that there's a resurrection at the end time. And Jesus said, you don't need to wait to the end time for this case. You don't need to. It, it, it means that I am waiting and not getting miracles and solutions to my problems because I, I have confined that problem or the solution to that problem to a distance in the future. I've confined it to a distance in the future. And so I'm dealing with it now when I don't have to.
to Jesus. You don't have to wait to the end. You can have it now if you believe. You can have it now if you believe. So my belief, my belief is really what matters to my miracle. My belief. So do I believe God enough that what he said he's going to do in my life, that he's going to do it? Or do I feel that certain things Things are too great for God to do. Oh no, I, I, He can do this. Yeah, yeah, I know God can. Do. But that one, no, no, no. I, I, I don't know if He's going to. Is that my mindset, or do I believe God holistically that He can do what He said He will do? Do I believe Him to that extent? It would have been different if when Jesus came, Martha and Mary, they were excited. Oh, thank God that Jesus is here. We know our brother is going to live because our master is here. It would have been different. It would be different. Jesus said to them, your brother is, is going to live again. And they said, we know, we know, we know he's going to. It would have been different. But in their mind, if you had been here, our brother that was sick would not have died because you can heal the sick, but you cannot raise the dead. <laughs> both of them, that's what I say. If, if you had been here, both of them, if you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. And then all of the other people that were there said, well, if he truly loved him, he would have come four or five days ago and healed him because he healed the blind eye. So they all believed that Jesus would have saved him before he died. But they didn't believe that Jesus would save him after he's dead. And God blew their minds. And at the end day when Lazarus was alive, they couldn't believe that Lazarus was alive again. And the news went all over the place. That Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. And I'm here to tell us today, nothing it's impossible for God to do. Nothing, nothing is impossible for God to do. And the reason we feel that the impossibility is impossible for God to do is because we do not believe him enough that those things that we think are impossible are truly and indeed possible. You see, Jesus was not panicking. <laughs> right he was not when they when he they told him Lazarus was sick Jesus took his time He's, he continued to go about his business and I think about how much we panic when things happen unexpected situation happen we panic but Jesus believed God and believed in the part of God that regardless of the outcome of that event the best is still going to come out of it so he was not panicking he continued to preach the word continued to travel from one place to the other until he stopped and said folk Lazarus is sleeping disciples say yeah if he's sleeping that's a good thing he can get some rest and get better they said no I mean he's dead and the disciples probably cry and say, oh my God, Lazarus, our friend, he took care of us. And they began to eulogize Lazarus. But Jesus said, let's go wake him up. <laughs> you know, sometimes Jesus has a sense of humor. Let's go wake him up. And the disciples probably mesmerized. Said, go wake him up. He's dead. Go wake him up. He's dead. But let's go wake him up. And he did wake Lazarus from the dead. Because he has the power over everything. From the beginning to the end of life. It's power over it. And so whatever is going on in my own personal life today, I want to submit it to God and say, God, I trust you enough that you will work it out. It don't matter if he's dead. It don't matter. If that thing is dead, it don't matter. If he can do it the first day, he can do it the 
100th day. The power doesn't change, doesn't di diminish. Time does not diminish the power of God. Jesus, the same yesterday, he's the same today, he's the same forever. That's it. That he came late did not mean that the situation was not going to be resolved. They mean that it's, everybody thought he came late, but no. So you're all going to see today. We're, if, if, we, if we just lay hand on the sick and the sick recover, that, that won't make much to you because we've done that many times. But a four-day cops, we're going to bring it out. <laughs> glory to God. And that is really going to bring glory to heaven. You know, I say this, the more the problem, the greater the testimony. Yeah, if I, if I come here and testify to you, well, I, just, I, I applied to a job, I got a job. Everybody gets a job, right? Everybody got a job. That's common. But if, if I say, I, you can't believe this, my hand was literally cut off. I mean literally cut off. And there was blood everywhere. And somehow I took that and put it back and it came back together. That's different. Because that's not common. That is different. That's what I'm talking about. Risen Lazarus was a different dimension of miracle. And everybody who saw it on that day, their lives would never be the same again. Now put yourself back in that space. Like you were there on that day. I want the disciples. And you saw that in the spirit. That it truly happened. It was cement your faith. Lift up your hand. Just bless the Lord. Lift up your hand. Just bless him. Tell him, God, I thank you. I thank you. Help my unbelief, oh God. I don't want to be a non-believing believer. From this day, I don't want to be a non-believer. I want to be a believer in Christ. I want to be a believer in Christ. That the first day, I still believe the second day and to the fourth day. The same belief that I had the first day, I have it the fourth day. No matter if he is stinking, stinky, whatever it is, dead in the tomb. I know that Jesus can bring him back to life. I don't want to be a non-believing believer. I want to believe God for all things. I want to believe God for all things. Now talk to God about that miracle. That thing that you, you thought, you thought, no God can't. I've never seen it done before. And that's exactly what God wants to do. Because you have never seen it done before. And God wants to show to me and you that he can do anything. He can do anything. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Don't do, don't do like Martha and Mary. Well, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. What, what? It doesn't matter to Jesus if he was there or he was not there the, fourth or the, the, the first, second, third day. No didn't matter because he got it all he got it all he got it all glory to god just tell him god this is that miracle that i need from you you who brought lazarus from the dead four days in the tomb lord there's nothing you cannot do you will bring me out of this situation in the name of jesus yes lord yes lord Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. My God, my God. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We're just about done. Just about done. One more minute. One more minute. Just talk to God. One more minute. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, oh God. We praise you now. We praise you now. We praise you now. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Bless the Redeemer, Savior, and friend. We give you praise now. Thank you for the mighty things that you are doing. Thank you for the mighty things that you are doing in our lives. And God, thank you for your hand of miracle that's going to work out again the goodness of God in our lives. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. 
in jesus name we pray amen father we thank you right now we give you praise and glory thank you for every one of us that's here this day god and lord we look up to you for a miracle in our lives jehovah you did this great miracle you raised lazarus back from the dead after four days in the tomb god with you nothing shall be impossible we bring before you all of our impossibility what we cannot do but god we believe that you can do it and father we just ask your mercy right now because you're the same yesterday today and forever you did it before you can do it again and you will do it again lord give us a testimony of our lives in the name of Jesus father we thank you right now we give you glory and honor for in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and a mighty big amen God if you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request we would like to hear about it please call us at 401 954 6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org you are also welcome to join us on sundays for services beginning at 8 30 10 a.m or 6 p.m and for wednesday bible studies at 7 p.m we are located at 500 greenville avenue in johnston rhode island please remember that you are always welcome at king's tabernacle where jesus christ is lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.